Good evening. It's another kind of cool, cold day in Michigan. I don't know if you was up last night. I was up about 1130 and it was snowing. I thought, my gosh, it's springtime, but it's wintertime. But Michigan has a different viewpoint of spring than what Pastor has. This morning it was very cold and unusual weather, but hey, God is good. We got a lot to be thankful for and a lot to praise God for in this time that we're living in. There's a lot of difficult times going on in America, but I'm sure that God knows exactly what he's doing and what's going on with this COVID-19. We got a lot to be thankful for, as I said, a lot to pray about. Please remember Jack and Glenda Ruffner as they travel down Wednesday or Thursday for Jack's mom's funeral to Kentucky. As Brother Charlie mentioned this morning, continue to pray for Jack recovery. Pray for my cousin Beth as she recovers from the fall, breaking both legs and a uh, difficult time right there. So pray for that. Pray for Orville and Brenda and pray for Jason and Melissa. Pray for all of our people that are down and out and, and missing a lot of things today. But we know that God is in control. Pray for our nation. I ask that you pray that God would put a healing upon America. Someone said to me today, Pastor, did you believe God's allowing this to happen to get our attention? And I said, I believe he is. And I wonder how many people realize what's going on in our land today. I think we need to take a, a real blinders off and say, God, give me spiritual wisdom and spiritual vision to see what is happening in America. Because my friend, I'm telling you, there's things that they're doing to American people that it's not God's will that we would be in bondage or that we would suffer the way we're suffering today with the persecution against the church and God's people. I pray for revival in our church, not only our church, but all the churches in America, that we would preach the word of God. Quit trying to preach theology, man's opinion, and whatever you think about it, it don't matter. We better be preaching the word of God and teaching what thus saith the word of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. My friend, we better be preaching the word of God. We better be prayed up, paid up, and ready to go. For he said, I'll come in an hour that you think not. And my friend, America is primed for the coming of the Lord. As Charlie so wonderfully said in Sunday school, Sunday morning, there's nothing left to, to happen in America that would prevent the coming of the Lord. So we need to be prepared. Would you pray with Pastor? Take your Bibles while I pray, or, and we'll go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings of life. Lord, I pray you'd send a revival unto America today. Send revival among our people. And, oh, God, give us spiritual ears and spiritual eyes to see the truth. Help America to wake up and turn to you before it's too late. Be with all of our people that are hurting today. Those that are traveling, be with the rough and her family. God, I pray you give them traveling mercy, for it is in Christ's name we pray, and amen. We've had a busy day here in the office today, and uh, last evening was busy, and the day has been very busy. Miss Angel's listening, but she just left the office. She's worked a hard today. Pastors kept her very busy. Through faith in Christ, we are given a spiritual power of love and discipline. Do you hear what I said? Of love and discipline. And for the reason, we have nothing to fear. For we can hold on to his promises and be comforted that he sees us and through him is all things, even in the dark days, God has our hand. He is good to you and I today. We can hold on through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's look at what Paul writes to a young preacher. And so many times I read Timothy and I think about Paul writing to me when I started out a long time ago. And I still love Paul's writing. As far as I'm concerned, Paul and John are my two favorites in the Bible. But listen to what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 starting in verse 2. To Timothy, 
my dearly beloved son. My dearly beloved son. Now, he wasn't Paul's physical son. He was Paul's spiritual son. In other words, I've got a lot in the church that I've adopted that I call my spiritual sons. And I love them with so much. Uh, we'll not get into that. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and, our, and Christ Jesus our Lord. In verse 3, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayer night and day. Paul said, Son, I pray for you night and day. I remember you in the middle of the night, early in the morning. I continue to pray for you. I thank God for the saints of God who prays for Pastor Slater on a daily basis. I'm telling you, I thank God for the saints of God who get on their knees and cry out to God on a daily basis for me. I thank God for the brethren in the church who pray for pastor and encourage me each day of my life. Great greeting, greatly desiring, greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of the tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remember the unfrigging faith that is in thee, which dwelleth first in thy grandmother Lois, and also thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that it is in thee also. In other words, Paul saying to Timothy, I am persuaded that the faith that your grandmother had, that your mother had, that I believe it is in you, and you know the truth. You know what's right, and you know what is wrong. I believe today there's a lot of people that know the truth, but they don't want to live by the truth. They want to do it their way. But my friend, listen to Pastor today. It ain't about you, and it ain't about me. It is about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we committed our life to him, we no longer became our own. The Bible said we were bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. We belong to Christ. We are ambassadors today, and we're to let the world know who side that we're on. My friend, I get excited thinking about where I'm going and what I'm supposed to be doing. Listen, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of thy hand. Paul saying, listen, I pray that that spirit of God that is in you gets stirred up. Boy, let me tell you what, I love it when God gets a hold of us and makes me do what I need to do. Listen, God can change a life when a pastor can't change nobody. There's some of us today, listen, we've gotten so cold and so indifferent when the Holy Ghost gets on us, it don't even shout, make a shout. My friend, I want to shout when it gets a hold of me. I love it today. Wherefore, put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of the hands. Last verse. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what I want to talk about real quickly. Listen, we got power today. We're not helpless. Jesus gave us power, which is called the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Man, don't be ashamed to say, I'm born again, washed in the blood, and my name's written down in the land's book of life. Thank God for what you have today. Listen, he gave us power of the Spirit not to fear and to have a sound mind. Listen, don't be, don't be saying, well, maybe God, maybe this, maybe that. Believe it. Believe what the Word of God says and everything will be fine. Second Timothy says that, to believe in the Lord. Go with us in Psalms 138 and 3. I'll read it to you. When I called, ye answered me. You made me to be bold. You know what? When I called upon the Lord, he gave me boldness. He gave me strength to stand up and to do what is right. And I can do all things, the Bible said. Paul said, through Christ who strengthens me. Psalm 62 and 1 and 2. Listen to what David says. Trust my soul waiteth upon God. For him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. 
He is my defense, and I shall not be moved. I am glad that God has everything that this old boy needs. Psalms 112 and verse 1. Listen to this. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his command. We're to be on fire and greatly excited about the goodness and mercy of Almighty God. In verses 7 and 8 it says that he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed and trusts in the Lord. Do you trust in the Lord today? Are you trusting God to take care of everything in your life? I'm convinced today this COVID-19, God got it. He allowed it to happen. It's man-made, but God gave him the ability to make this to show the people I am God. Someone said they need a vaccine. God's got it. <laughs> God already has the cure for it. Though, though, oh, God has it. I'm not worried. God has it. Verse 8, his heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemy. You know what? There's an enemy that we're faced today, and it is an unseen enemy. You and I can't see it. We can't uh, physically fight it. It's a spiritual enemy. But don't you think my God can't see it? Don't you think my God don't know exactly what's going on? Don't you think my God don't know where we're at today in the times that we live in? He knows it. Trust me, my friend. There's not anything going on in America today that God don't know about. I pray that you stay safe. I pray that you use good common sense. Let God lead you and guide you. I'm going to say something this evening. and You may agree or disagree with Pastor. Don't be listening to everything the media puts out. I'm going to challenge you to use your mind and get on your knees and ask God to deliver you. Let God show you where you need to be going and what you need to be doing. We're not to be put in a box by anybody. I'm a child of the king, and I've been set free. I'm going to trust in him, and I'm going to stand upon the word of God. Are you afraid of dying? No. Why? I'm going to heaven. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm not going to go out and commit suicide, but I'm going to be ready when he comes. We're going to die of something. So don't let this drive you nuts. Let God lead you, guide you, and teach you in all things. We love you. I hope you enjoy it. Share this with someone. Uh, let everyone know that Jesus loves them, cares about them. Tune in to Brother Charlie at 10 o'clock in the morning. I usually try to get a hold of it. I've got two or three things going on this morning. I was listening to him and trying to uh, schedule meetings and do some stuff. And then I finally had to quit what I was doing and listen to Charlie. He was so good. I love it. And thank God for it. His is a little longer than mine. He does a lot of commentary, singing, and answering questions. And I'm not going to get into that. Pastor's schedule is too busy. Do pray for Pastor. I've got so much going on and so many decisions to make. And I want you to be honest with me. I've gotten three people that's contacted me since yesterday. And three people said they'd come back on the 31st if we open up. If we only got three people, we'll just continue live streaming because it'll cost a whole lot more to clean the church and open the church up for three families than it would. I don't know. You, be, you better let me know what you want to do because it's a big decision. And if you don't want to come, that's fine. I got to preach anyway. <laughs> I can preach. I don't know. I'm getting used to this camera thing, so I'll keep preaching to you. You keep tuning in. I love you. May God bless you until tomorrow at 430. Stay safe. Pastor loves you. Amen.